Welcome to This is My Architecture. My name is Christian, and today I'm joined by Jean-Paul from Nagra. Welcome, Jean-Paul. Hello, Christian. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about Nagra. So Nagra provides uh, security and multi-screen user experience solutions uh, for the monetization of digital media. Uh, I'm in charge of the NextCard B2C team uh, that works on watermarking, uh, forensic watermarking products, uh, including for on-demand and live that we discussed today. Very good. So maybe you want to quickly explain what watermarking is. Yeah, so watermarking is the process of adding uh, an imperceptible mark to audio or video content. Um, and its goal is to make it traceable, mm -hmm. uh, such that when it leaks, uh, it can be traced back to where it came from. Uh, a typical example is uh, around uh, piracy as seen for the movie or sport industry. Uh, but other industries, they face similar challenges. I'm curious to learn more about this architecture. Maybe you can start walking us through and what we have here. Yes, so the architecture consists of different blocks. So the first block is the watermark uh, pre-processing. Uh, in this part, uh, we create uh, two variants of the content, uh, A and B. Mm -hmm. And these variants, they are uh, visually identical, uh, but they contain uh, a distinct watermark. The second part is uh, the watermark embedding. So at that part, um, we leverage the fact that content, uh, when distributed over the internet, uh, is typically chunked in small pieces of like two seconds. And for each piece, we select either the A or the B variant. And over time, this builds uh, a sequence uh, that is uh, possible to uniquely identify the session. Mm -hmm. uh, these two elements, uh, we uh, typically uh, deploy that in a customer environment, and we have some cloud formation to make that very easy. Uh, there's a third component, that is the detection service. This is really a service offered uh, by Nagra. And this, is, um, this allows you to provide content to the service and extract the AB sequence inserted. Can you please explain how you identify these different players with these AB versions? So let me give you an example. Let's say we have two players, for example, a mobile device, uh, your PC or connected TV. Mm -hmm. They will first connect to a CMS, content management system. And this content management system will actually grant access and the player will select the content to watch. At this point, the content management system will also select the, the AB sequence uh, for each player uh, that will be used for that session. So for example, the first player gets AB, AB, the second player gets AB, BA. This information is provided as a token and will go into uh, the request to CloudFront. So for each uh, request, each segment, CloudFront will use the Lambda at Edge to insert a sequence that is encoded in that token. OK, so you, by using CloudFront and Lambda at Edge, you select which sequences of these AB versions are being delivered to the different players to identify them. Right. So why did you choose for this package of CloudFront and Lambda at Edge? And what are the benefits of that? So we were looking for a scalable solution uh, to apply this AB sequence uh, during the streaming session. Mm -hmm. And Lambda at Edge was a good fit. And it also allowed us to, to leverage the, the, the CDN caching. Uh, other solutions like a container or regular Lambda, they were basically not fast enough because they were not close enough to the edge. Uh, another thing is that the, the Lambda at Edge, we have basically a very efficient uh, execution so that we add also minimal latency, mm -hmm. which is also great for live content. And for that one, we're also looking now into CloudFront functions to, that will scale even better than Lambda at Edge. I can imagine that uh, latency is a very critical factor also with regards to user experience here. We are having DynamoDB in this, uh, in this space over here. So maybe you can tell us a little bit what, you, what you're using it for. So DynamoDB is actually for a very specific feature that we call a blacklisting. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that when the detection service finds uh, basically a certain sequence, for example, AB, AB, it can decide to populate the DynamoDB with the session information. And at that point, the Lambda Edge, when it is querying the database, uh, when it is processing the request, it can actually decide to block a certain session. So as a result, uh, the, the play out for that player, uh, in this case, player one, would stop. So we can terminate the session. So you have a mechanism to identify um, if a breach has happened, but you can also um, shut down the session once it has been identified. Exactly. Perfect. So we've been learning about how you're distributing the content out to the different players and how do the different end users. So how do you prepare that content actually with these A and B versions? So the content preparation depends a little bit on the type of content, mm -hmm. if it's VOD on demand or if it's live. Uh, but in principle, it's very similar. And from CloudFront point of view, it's, it's identical. 
Um, if, uh, if we look at VOD, uh, the input is actually a file that uh, will go into an S3 bucket. This file will then go into Media Convert. And Media Convert is actually the, the, the part where the AB watermark or the variants are created. Mm -hmm. So the output of Media Convert uh, will be those A and B versions. And this goes into the S3 bucket that will then be the origin to CloudFront. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are different options. Um, you could use some scripting or like FFmpeg. Um, but the benefit of this solution is that it's based on managed services that are easier to deploy and use. And also because you mentioned you're deploying this via CloudFormation automated into the customer accounts, that's maybe also an easy approach to use those managed services instead of having a complex setup. Exactly. So that was for the video on demand content. How does it work for live? So for live, it's, it's very similar, uh, but the input will be a live feed. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will go to Media Connect that will split the feed into two. Mm -hmm. And then Media Live, where the encoder, encoding takes place, we have two channels. One channel will be the A variant, and the other channel will be the B variant. So it's here where we insert the watermark. Then Media Package will pre prepare it for internet distribution and will then be the, the origin for the cloud front. Great. So that is very interesting. What have you planned for the future, or how are you uh, evolving this architecture? So we are currently looking into data analytics mm -hmm. um, to identify early on if a session is used for piracy. Uh, for example, a session that doesn't terminate and is on a live channel continuously, mm -hmm. uh, that's suspicious. Um, another area uh, is uh, audio watermarking, uh, to not only protect the video content, but to offer the same also for the audio. Very, very interesting. Thank you so much, Jean-Paul, for sharing this architecture with us today. Thanks again for having me. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.